Hi, I'd like to take a moment to introduce myself, talk a little bit about my expectations for the course, what I'll expect from you and what you can expect from me, as well as a little bit about my teaching philosophy. So the first thing to know is my name is Mike, and Mike Marin. I've been teaching statistics at uh, the University of British Columbia since 2005. I've taught um, lots of different courses to different audiences, so I was teaching in the stats department for a while where it was very scientific and more of the mathematics of statistics. I've also taught in professional programs where it's very conceptual and um, little number crunching at all. So the point of what I'm trying to say is I know the whole spectrum of teaching very conceptually as well as teaching very mathematically. And in this course, we're going to kind of hit somewhere in between the two. We're not going to be looking at theory and derivations and things like that, um, but we are going to be doing calculations and, and data analysis, mostly with software. Um, so in terms of my teaching approach, I kind of do a mix of a what I call transitive and apprentice. So in the transitive approach, what I mean by that is there's a portion of the course where I try and transfer information to you. I talk, explain ideas, I show things, you watch and learn from that. And then the other half of the approach is what I call the apprentice approach, where I try and get you doing things and learning the material by actually doing it and working hands-on yourself. So I believe in a, a topic like statistical analysis, there needs to be a, a fair amount of, of transmission where I do need to explain the ideas and show it to you before you can go off and do it on your own. And the final thing I want to say about myself is that I've always loved teaching and I've always loved, well, I shouldn't say always loved statistics. Once I got exposed to it in undergrad is when I really started to fall in love with it. So I always wanted to be a teacher. Then I had the required stats course. I really started to enjoy it. I saw how I could apply it to um, gambling and games of chance and lots of areas of life and I really started to like the subject as well. So this kind of work combines two of my passions. <clears throat> um, so some of my expectations, what do I expect of you from this course? And the first is that I expect you to um, have a desire to learn and to work independently. So not to be here just to get a grade and get through the course, but to actually want to learn this material. And I hope as we go through it, you see the value in why it's, it's important to understand this material. I expect that you're doing some work ahead of time. So before coming to the class meetings, you've read through notes or read the textbook or watched some of these video lectures, right? There's different ways to consume the material, but then you've done some prep work before showing up to the class time. <coughs> um, I expect that you're gonna have a willingness to work hard and make mistakes um, and know that me giving you the answers isn't the best way to learn, but you exploring your way and getting there yourself is really gonna help the learning and that making mistakes, it's um, proven that that's the best way to learn things. Um, I guess this, this is a prerequisite expectation, but I expect that you're familiar with the content in the prereq courses, so you've um, done some intro statistics and you've done some intro epi and are familiar with those concepts. Um, and then finally, that if you're through the assignments and work like that, when you're asking about errors that are made and marks that were uh, removed, that you're asking for the sake of learning and understanding where you got things wrong and not just worrying so much about the grade. Um, so the grade, I understand that school conditions all of us to focus on the grade and worry about that, but really your learning and what you take from the course is much more important than any number assigned um, to you. When you leave the school, Really, the grade you got doesn't matter very much. The knowledge that's in your head is what matters. Um, so what can you expect from me? I guess the, the first thing I want to give you is, through this course, I want to give you a solid foundation in regression methods, especially as they apply to health research. And um, you can expect that I'm going to do my best to give you the ability of not just to work with this material, but to take it and extend it. Um, so to I want to give you a good base understanding of what are regression models in general. And if you need to understand other regression models that we don't talk about in the course, that you're going to be able to do so by using this core knowledge we build and extending it. Uh, so on that note, you can expect I'm going to give you exposure to concepts and ideas beyond just the core topics of the course. So often when we're talking about certain topics, I'll point to here's extensions or here's further things you can explore on your own. So you can build that knowledge if you want to. 
And finally, you can expect me to be dedicated to you and your learning of this content. As I said, I love teaching. That's my passion. It's what I'm here to do. And I'm going to do my best to help support you through this course and this material in any way reasonable that I can. Um, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about my teaching philosophy, the way I, I think about teaching and learning. And I think that's important to understand who I am and why I'm doing certain things. Right? I think if you understand my approach to teaching and learning and what I believe, it's going to help you better understand why I'm doing certain things, why I'm doing things a certain way, or why I'm not doing things a certain way. So, a little bit about my philosophy. So the first is that I think you need to have regular engagement with the material. regular engagement with the material. Where a lot of this has come from is I remember when I was an undergraduate student, I started in economics, and a lot of our courses had a 30% midterm, 70% final. And what I found was you didn't do very much work until those two big chunks came up, and then you crammed before that. And I did pretty well on the exams, but I found the material didn't really stay. And that's because I wasn't regularly working on it and kind of getting the ideas in my brain. I crammed them all in there, wrote an exam, and then they all floated out. So the way I try and hit this point is through the course, we have pieces of assessment that are submitted roughly every two weeks. Okay, so I try and keep you working on things, submitting them, and getting some feedback of, for them. And also, each of our weekly lectures have um, ungraded and non-submitted activities that go along with them that allow you again to take the material you're learning and work on it, engage with it on a weekly basis. Um, I also believe that assignments are where the best learning happens. Okay, and again, um, our course will have an exam. The exams, I really believe, they're good for two reasons. They, I guess, force you to kind of engage with all the material at the end of the course and try and solidify it a bit. And they also work as kind of assessment tools for an instructor to determine a grade. The assignments, I think, are where you engage with the material the most and learn the most from. They also end up with uh, really high grades because you have lots of time to work on them. But uh, I try and design the assignments to give you lots of engagement with all the different ideas, some room to work on the basic things we've seen, and some room to try and explore or extend the knowledge a bit and, and solidify it in that way. Um, I think learning needs to be active. <clears throat> so not just me sitting and, and talking to you, but I think that you need to be working on the material. And Part of the way we do this is having the uh, weekly activities. We've had to redesign a little bit how they work, um, depending when the course is fully online, like it's happening right now, or when we're in a classroom and we have some face-to-face um, -face engagement. But I think that you know, actively working on the material helps you learn it, not passively, where I, I talk at you, you listen, and then you um, later on repeat that. And so. Going along with the active, I also think learning should be collaborative. Okay. What I mean by that is when you sit and work on ideas with your, your colleagues, when you sit and discuss them, that this helps the learning. Right? Um, whether you're the person who's at the higher end of, of the understanding and explaining it to your other group, right? I think that's beneficial. Um, I've always found teaching something is the best way to really understand it. And if you have to explain it to someone else, it forces you to really solidify your thinking about it before you can convey it clearly. And obviously, if you're um, working in a group and you're at the lower end where you're having people explain it to you, you're benefiting by having people who are um, your colleagues and more on your level explain that idea to you. Um, and then also, especially in something like um, public health research where the nature of the work is very collaborative, right? I think that's important to to build that skill of how to work with um, a diverse group. And another thing I think is important is efficient use of time.
And what I mean by that is our time is a limited resource. So I really try and any piece of work I give you to do, I try and make sure that there's a good reason for doing it. So I don't give you busy work. I don't give assignments unless I think there's some benefit from that. I don't um, give you activities, optional activities, I guess, to work on, unless I think there's some value in doing that. Okay, so again, I think our time is limited. I try and make sure that we can get the most out of the shortest amount of time. Um, another part of my philosophy is understanding that people learn differently. Maybe I'll just say people are different. Um, and so, some people learn more quickly, some people learn more slowly. Um, people have different backgrounds. Right? Some people have done a, a lot of statistics before or a lot of mathematical or technical type subjects and pick up the stuff quickly. Some people might not have as much of that training and it takes more time to pick it up. So I know that, I believe that, and I really try and keep that in mind when we work through everything that everyone's pace of learning is gonna be a little bit different. Another thing I always try and remember is that you're all adults, and we have mutual respect. So I'm not going to treat you like you're a child. You can make your own decisions on what you want to do or not do. Um, I'm going to always treat you with respect. And I, one thing I find that um, I always try to keep in the back of my mind is that um, all of you are really no different than me. I might be a few years further down the line in terms of the training, but um, that's really the only difference between me and you, I believe, is that I'm just, you know, hopefully not too many years on, but uh, I'm a few years further down the line than you are. And then the final point I want to make, I'll let it up here, it's uh, I think one of the important ones, is that I have high expectations. Okay. And what I mean by that is I've acknowledged that we all have different levels, we're coming from different backgrounds. <clears throat> so I don't expect everyone to be at the same level, but I've always found in life when someone, for me, sets the bar low, I tend to not really put much effort into it and you just kind of step over that little bar and, and move on. And I found when people have high expectations, that's what always has gotten the most out of me. And so I like to do the same with you. Okay? I'm going to be realistic and acknowledge that you, know, you may be someone who's already an expert in stats, or you may be someone who, these are some of your first exposures to the topic. So I'm not going to have the same bar I expect for everyone, but I'm going to expect that you are going to work to be close to the best version of yourself throughout this course. So this is a little about bit about me and myself and how I approach uh, teaching and learning and now we can get into talking a little bit about what the course is going to look like. Stick around guys, there's more to see and please stay safe.